silence must fall when the question is asked. A guiding tenet of the organisation known as the Church, but what does it actually mean and why is the Church so heavily tied to the Doctor? Hi, Rick here and today's Index is looking onto the silence and the silence. That is two different things, silence with a C-E and also with a T-S, but technically they're part of the same order so it all comes under the same church roof. This is going to get confusing isn't it? Well let's start then at the most obvious place, the beginning. In the 52nd century there existed a religion ordained over by the papal mainframe. This organisation's origin is a bit obscure, but its role is effectively a militant arm of the church, overseen perhaps in part by a Christian linked faith, but a number of other religions too as they do claim to commune with various afterlives. There is a lot of terminology that is thrown around that does not align completely with current era doctrine, so what we're looking at is likely an evolution or amalgamation of several faiths. As mentioned however, the role of the papal mainframe was not to console, teach or evangelise, but of military action. Their designated function was to protect human settlements, overseeing the safety of the soul in this life and the next as it was put. To this end, much like the orders of holy knights from millennia past, the papal mainframe included much more military aspects and titles among its ranks. The exact layout and structure of the church may have changed with time over the years as with many of the subjects of the cultural index from Doctor Who, we see the organisation at numerous points in its lifetime and are exposed to several different orders and chapters that make up its holy structure. Roles within the organisation included priests, bishops, clerics and vergers. The priests oversaw the well-being of those who followed the church of the papal mainframe and here we have the origin of the silence, but we'll get back to them at the second half of this video. A cleric refers to many official titles within a religion, but within the papal mainframe many of the infantry and personnel bore this rank. A bishop within the clergy could also hold rank over soldiers and much like a military ranking system, these were then divided up into further classes. There were also colonels and such who were higher up and oversaw much larger scale operations and answered to the chapter's head. This sort of tiered ranking also applied to their laws and punishments. For example, there were different severities of heresy that could be enacted with level 1 punishable by death. The whole organisation however was overseen by the Mother Superius, Tasha Lem during the 51st to the 61st century, who seemed to be intimately familiar with the Doctor. The chapters were each overseen by another member of the cloth and the papal mainframe often worked alongside other church orders. The Order of Headless Monks for example were extremely dedicated to the creed that you were to listen to your heart, not the head and as such the ultimate display of faith for these monks was to decapitate themselves. Yet through the miracle of technology of the time this was not fatal. The severed heads were kept in transepts and in sealed boxes, or loose. These remained alive and very much conscious, full of their individuality and aware of themselves while the body continued on acting out the demands of their order. The loose heads however decayed and became feral while the boxed ones lived on. I can't help but wonder if they became feral due to the fact that they were still aware as severed heads, surely that would have driven anyone insane. Unless you had a handy mental internet connection as Dorian Maldova did. This particular branch of the church survived until the 171st century. The papal mainframe was based in a large interstellar vehicle of the same name which traversed the systems undertaking its holy missions. It was a sign of respect when visiting such a place to arrive naked, in the nude, nuddy. Perhaps this harkens back to the ideas of original sin or has some other origin, but either way the Abashid need not fear as holographic clothing was allowed. One can only hope the inside of a 52nd century church is not as drafty as current ones. Also the guards of such a place can see through holograms anyway. But hey you might feel a little better about it. The ship itself was very powerful with strong scanners and pinpoint weaponry that could be deployed from orbit. However because of timeline changes the role of the papal mainframe was forever altered by the intervention of the Doctor, Paradoxes and indirectly the Time War. You see, 
It began when they uncovered a prophetic question and wrote it into their scripture for its potentially dire consequences. With the Doctor's antics in time shaping history and growing his legend, they soon identified the meaning of the prophecy. On the fields of Trenzalor at the fall of the 11th, when no living creature can speak falsely or fail to answer, a question will be asked. A question that must never, ever be answered. Doctor Who. As with many things in Doctor Who, this grandiose sounding prophecy and impressive duty have a grounded origin and it loses much of its mysticism when analysed. The Time War was long since over and locked away, but apparently answering this question would bring it all back, plunging the universe into chaotic war once again. Naturally, the Papal Mainframe took it upon itself to ensure that this never happened, and as such assigned itself a role in the paradox to come. The question, once answered honestly, would bring the Time Lords back through a crack in space-time, but with all the enemies of the species waiting in orbit over Trenzalore, their return would be a massacre. In order to establish if it was safe or not to return, Time Lords broadcast a question asking for the Doctor's name. It was the oldest question in the universe, as the Time Lords had broadcast it throughout time. In order to maintain the Doctor's silence, the Church aided him in upholding this stalemate and observed for 900 years over Trenzalore, playing diplomat and enforcers where possible with the numerous aliens. The siege of Trenzalore lasted so long that the Church's tenants were adapted and changed into the Church of Silence to maintain its new crusade. However, not every chapter agreed on their methodology. The Covarian chapter of the Church of Silence reasoned that if the Doctor were dead, then there was no longer a risk of a second time war, and soon they broke off from the main clergy, basing themselves on Demon's Run to conduct their attempted assassinations. Adopting the name The Silence, they were capable of time travel. Exactly how is unknown, but it's solid enough reasoning to argue that you need such a capability to track a time traveller. The first attempt saw them try to trap the Doctor in the TARDIS and blow it up, but inevitably they failed and actually created the very cracks in time that the Time Lords were now using to attempt to return. Then they tried again, this time with a more subtle approach. They searched for a potential assassin that could be made to rival the Doctor, finding the unborn child of his companions. They abducted the mother and experimented on the child who had been exposed to the energies of time travel. This child, Melody Pond, grew up to become River Song, and she had a very confusing timeline. Suffice to say, they enforced powerful mental conditioning and cultivated in her the ability to regenerate with the sole purpose of killing the Doctor. Then in Utah 2011, Lake Silencio, the culmination of their second attempt. They were trying to artificially create a fixed point in time so that the Doctor could not escape. But long story short, he did. Alongside their fellow devotees, the Silence brought with them a number of confessional priests who eventually became known as the Silence. So onto these creatures then. The Silence are around 7 foot tall and very slender men. They were genetically engineered by the Church of the Papal Mainframe to receive confession from its followers, and they have an interesting effect termed memory proof. Basically, you cannot retain an image of them in your mind, and events unfolding while you are looking at them are forgotten. Even knowledge of them will fade over time, at a faster rate than usual, and somehow this ability persisted even in recreations of their image. This effect took around a second or so to kick in after breaking line of sight. Those who worked closely alongside a silent wore an iDrive device to retain their memories outside of their mind and keep the image fresh. If a silent imparted a command to someone who then forgot their presence, the order would persist in their psyche as a post-hypnotic suggestion. They also had the ability to absorb and store electrical energy from a power source or even ambient static. They could then amplify this and discharge it with a high enough power to disintegrate a person. They slept upside down in clusters with their arms drawn in. Perhaps their manipulation of electricity lends itself to some form of electrostatic adhesion, where they can then stick to surfaces. That would be cool. The Kaverian chapter set in motion a long plan to take on the Doctor and originally sent their silent priests back in time as far back as the Stone Age in order to guide mankind on a desired path. 
Over time, they imparted commands and manipulated humans, urging them to develop certain technologies that would benefit the Church of Silence, and lingering in the corners of the eye, always seen, but then forgotten. It would seem that the rogue chapter itself did not partake in these manipulations, instead allowing their ever-present proxies to propagate throughout human history. The Silence were unable to innovate, they could not create, it was likely not part of their genetic design, hence the need to guide humans from the shadows. Over the hundreds of millennia, they lost their original demeanour as priests and became malevolent, scorning ideals of mercy and lacking compassion. They became monsters. Naturally then, the Doctor tricked them into turning humanity against them, without mankind ever realising it. It was also suspected that encounters were occasionally remembered in part, in some way for if the image of a silent, clad in its black suit, was recorded in a way where it looked substantially different, then the image would persist. Such images are speculated to include ancient hieroglyphs, the 1893 screen painting, and the silhouette of the alien grey, and perhaps other urban legends, such as the men in black. In terms of capabilities and technology, the Church of Silence was local to the 52nd century and their headquarters, Demon's Run, mirrored the level of advancement found in the Church of the Papal Mainframe, in that they were easily a spacefaring power at home with a myriad of energy and ballistic weaponry. However, the Breakaway chapter spent a very long time researching the Doctor and even attempted to recreate a TARDIS, with some success, it seems, leading to them employing limited time travel in their plans. They also seemed to have a very strong understanding of the human psyche, as seen by their ability to create such complex organisms as the Silence, and their imparting of powerful conditioning into River Song, which she was not able to shake off until she had completed her task. So, that is a rundown of the Church of Silence, the silent creatures and their more lawful origins as an arm of a future organised religion. The way the Silence acted out their purpose borders on reverence for the one they hunted at times, and ultimately this led to sympathisers with the Doctor within their own order, and in no small part to the Gavarian chapter's downfall. While the original Papal mainframe remained mostly on the side of the just, their methods could also be seen as rather extreme, but the Doctor considered them an ally. So with all that said and done, let's take a look at the choices for the next index on the community tab. You can find the vote and it's either for the Bolians from Star Trek, as generally there's not much on them, or the Children of Atom from the Fallout universe for another dose of a fictional religion. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you next time for another science fiction video and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. What? No, I didn't say anything. What? I've been Rick. Goodbye.